the reason why I'm doing the, the presentation for Unit of Automation is um, the uh, Unit of Automation was, uh, was founded out of Ascolab uh, in 2006. So when the time, like, um, we are, as Ascolab, we are involved in the OPC working group since the beginning. And um, as soon as we saw that there are libraries necessary to build OPC UA, um, we had an initial project with a lot of working group members to do a reference implementation in C++, because we also did the, the reference implementation of the NCC stack in Ascolab. And um, with this reference implementation, there was like a lot of interest by by these working group members to have a maintained reference implementation that now we call SDKs. So that was the starting point where we decided to create a new company called Unif Automation that is doing like the product uh, business and Ascolab uh, is doing OPC consulting and services so we, we do consulting for a lot of uh, um, automation vendors and, and other companies that implement and integrate OPC or entire products. And so my first slide is, is all about like um, building an OPC or know-how network to support um, product vendors and end users in, in integrating OPC UA uh, into their products, into their solutions, into their machines. Um, and like like Ascolab is doing a lot of the, the background development and consulting for Unified Automation, but they are um, like in, in the process of, of coming from an idea to a, to a product or a solution that can be installed and shipped to end users, um, there is a lot of like things to do. It's, it starts from consulting for OPCA training, uh, that's what we do with workshops. Then uh, if you want to build some software, it, it would be helpful to have some useful tooling and um, not only libraries, also tools around. I will talk about that. And then um, you, you can build OPC UA products um, and, and ship them. And so we have um, like other companies or consultants. So that's a, a company from, from Canada. They, I'm not sure if somebody was involved in the early days of uh, .NET code from the OPC Foundation, Randy Armstrong. Um, he's behind that, so he's working for Unified Automation as, uh, as also as a contractor developer, but he's doing also a lot of OPC consulting and, and uh, OPC UA support in, in, in the US, uh, North America. And uh, there's, an ability, there's another person that behind that is in the, was in the OPC UA working group since the beginning. He worked for ABB before, and he's now also an OPC UA consultant uh, he's also leading several companion working groups, so he's also doing consulting in North America. And then we have Process OPC, so we work with them since also uh, several years. <laughs> um, so they provide uh, support and sales for, for the Unified Automation SDKs, and we do also sales for the Java SDK uh, in Unified Automation. And there are other OEMs that use tools from Unified Automation and build solutions from it. Um, and like in this, this know-how network, you, you'll find most of the editors of the OPC UA specifications, either as, um, as one of the contractors or as customers that work with the, with the tools since the beginning. Um, and you find also all of the editors of the, of the OPC Foundation communication stacks. So Process OPC was involved in the initial Java uh, stack project. Uh, Randy Armstrong was the editor of the, of the .NET sample code and .NET stack inside the OPC Foundation. And Ascolab was doing the, the initial or the NCC reference implementation, NCC stack. Um, so just to see that there's a little bit more around Unified Automation than just the, the SDKs. The, the products, um, like they, they uh, and, 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 and services, they're around the a product life cycle and not a, like we heard about product life cycle this morning, but it's around the product life cycle of OPC UA product. <laughs> and it starts from building knowledge with training, uh, consulting workshops, to building products um, with like the different SDKs 
um, with different programming languages, but also uh, to to in increase productivity with like with the development with tools like UA Modeler, uh, that is a graphically uh, user interface for for uh, OPC UA modeling, but also allows code generation for the SDKs and and a rapid prototyping. UA Expert is a is a free client that is used by a lot of people that like want to check uh, uh, if an OPC UA server installation works. I'm not sure who has used OPC UA Expert before. So a few. <laughs> um, so this is a free tool that can be you can download that and it's uh, it can be used to test most of the OPC UA functionality of a server. Um, but then we also provide support tools like UA Gateway is, is a protocol converter for cl uh, converting classic OPC to OPC UA. Um, so there, there, there are different SDKs for different ranges of, of platforms. Uh, so it's the, the NCC SDK, it's, um, it's pure NCC code, um, it, it can run in a single task. So it's also targeted for very small embedded systems. Um, then we have the C++ SDK also cross-platform um, with a lot of different platform layers, but it's more like for the high-end embedded systems and, and PC-based uh, OPC UA servers. Um, so you will find the NCC uh, SDK you will find in, in most of the, of the controller platforms from PLC vendors that scale down to smaller platforms. And the C++ SDK can be found in a lot of the uh, high-end uh, embedded platforms and PC platforms, OPC UA servers on the market. Um, so most of the, the major vendors rely on these two uh, SDKs for their, for their close-to-process uh, hardware-related uh, OPC UA servers. Then the Java SDK is, is, is for sure also cross-platform, but I think it's targeted more like to the enterprise level. Um, and uh, the .NET SDK is also more uh, like uh, integration projects and, and uh, enterprise connectivity. Um, but the scope of the .NET is a little bit smaller, but the, the sales number a little bit higher maybe. <laughs> .NET is a, is a popular uh, programming language for, 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 for projects. Um, and so the, the content of, of such a uh, SDK development library is typically you have a, you have a communication stack um, and like for the for the ones that can be ported like C and C++, you have a platform layer uh, for the different operating systems, processor versions, so like a, a Windows, Linux, QNX, VX works, so all kind of different operating systems. Um, so that that makes the the rest of the code base, the green part, independent of the platform. So just by replacing the platform layers, you can build the SDK. Uh, on new target platforms, and then in the uh, in the library in the application layer libraries, you have normally like a, a base functionality for for common tasks, a, cl a client library and a server library, and uh, so building OPC UA application client or server is then mainly using the APIs of these uh, of these higher level uh, libraries, and so that hides completely the the lower levels of stack and and, and protocols. And so the idea is you, you, you work with the higher level application lab, uh, library APIs and if, you, if OPC UA defines a new protocol, you update like the lower la uh, layer uh, uh, libraries and you get the new protocols with the with stack and SDK updates. Um, the, the license model for the SDK is a, is a developer license, so there is no additional runtime uh, fees. Um, so it's just a per developer license and there's a, a binary developer license that is um, like for a pre-compiled binary SDKs and it's a, like a limited number of platforms and compiler versions. Um, so typical, uh, the, the typical Windows um, Visual Studio platforms um, that are currently in use. And then there's a source code developer license with full source code uh, and with much more platform supported um, and also capability to port to any strange special platform that you can imagine. Um, so we have, for example, we had a customer that ported OPC UA, uh, the C++ SDK, to OpenVMS. 
um, keeping old ABB systems alive. And they even make now a new business with <laughs> their BMS systems. Um, okay, so the, the, the versions of the, of the different SDKs, so the, uh, for the NCC SDK, we have currently version 1.51. Um, and this is already updated to the uh, OPC UA 1.03 specification. Uh, so features like uh, the GDS uh, is supported as a push model at the moment there. So the, the server-side SDK provides um, the API or the, the functionality to, to do remote certificate configuration. Um, there was a, a client-side uh, library also added. Like in, before, the NCC SDK was just server. Uh, but with the, with the importance of these PLC open function blocks, client function blocks, we got more and more requests to also add a, a client-side functionality to the NCC SDK. And so that was added to the ver version 1.5. And there's also like these new structure features uh, is already included in the code generation uh, for the NCC SDK. Uh, on the C++ side, there is a version 1.5, I think that will be released end of this week or next week. And it uh, also brings the update to OPC 103. Um, it supports the, also the push model, so the server-side API to, to do remote configuration. But the client libraries also have all the functionality necessary to, for, the, for the fetching updates and certificates from the GDS. Uh, there is code generation for the for the new structure types, but also generic handling. So the SDK is able to deal with unknown structures at runtime. So there is no need to compile everything in. Uh, it's it's possible to to deal on the server and on the client side with structures that are configured or added at at runtime. Uh, so that's very important, especially for PLCs, because they're normally the user the, the user program in the PLCs is not compiled in when the PLC firmware is shipped. <laughs> I've not seen that before. So it's normally <laughs> done uh, by the end user. So the end user defines the structures and the structure needs to be then exposed by, by the OPC UA server of a controller. Um, .NET based SDK uh, is also, current version 2.4 is also released. It also is updated already to the OPC UA 103 spec. Um, supports GDS push and pull model uh, code generation for the structures and there we the generic handling of structure data types is new in this version so it was com added as a complete new feature um, and so for the Java I, you better ask you <laughs> about the, the roadmap and details um, just to give you two sh short case studies about uh, where the like this is for one for the NCC SDK and I, I, I took two case studies that are not pure industrial automation. Uh, so this is, uh, you maybe know Rital, they built these control cabinets. And um, they have like devices in there for like measuring temperature, humidity, and, and switching on um, uh, stuff or, or for, for getting access to the, to the door. Uh, they used SNMP protocol before for IT connectivity. Uh, but they added OPC UA for industrial uh, connectivity and even they, they now use OPC UA from there to their central SNMP management system to their, because it's, it's a little bit more efficient than SNMP. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a small controller uh, that has a CAN bus connectivity to the sensors. And it's a small embedded, very small embedded system. Um, and so if you buy such a cabinet from Rital with, with their little controller and sensors, you will get OPC UA in it now. Um, and another example for uh, that is not really industrial automation is, um, and as Stefan mentioned that already, it's, it's a hot box, de box, detect hot box detection system uh, from, from First Alpine. So they measure the temperature. Uh, of the axles when the when the train is driving over with 500 kilometers per hour um, to to one degrees uh, uh, Celsius uh, precise, and um, they they have like inside or there's a uh, there's a communication box sitting behind, beside. They they have an OPC interface interface there for connectivity to the central system, 
But this is just one example for, we have a, like a lot of activities in the, in the whole um, railway system infrastructure, uh, monitoring and, and maintenance, uh, where OPC here is very popular. Uh, there is a huge project in, in Germany with the German railway system where they use, want to use OPC for their whole equipment monitoring. So all devices uh, have, beside the safety related protocols, will also get OPC UA for diagnostic uh, functionality. Um, and this is, um, it, the UA modeler is a tool uh, that is like a, a graphical uh, modeling tool. Uh, that's that's a support tool. So it's it's what I said, like for, for rapid prototyping, or if you want to create your own information model to test something. Um, and so it's it, it's it allows you to export the model as a as a standard uh, node set, or you can do code generation. Um, so it's it has um, a code code generator template engine uh, where we have different uh, templates for the different programming languages um, and that can be extended also um, and there's a user interface for the for the modeling and the last tool I want to talk about is like the the UA gateway um, it's it's a, a protocol converter so you can uh, connect any OPC UA client to any OPC, classic OPC interface or, or classic OPC clients to, to OPC UA. So it has different OPC UA uh, client interfaces and different OPC server interfaces. Uh, but it allows also for OPC UA aggregation. So you can aggregate different OPC UA servers into one address space. Um, and it's uh, not limited to data access, it has the full blown OPC UA functionality for, for the aggregation part. Okay, I think that was my, my presentation. Thank you.